to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. We welcome you today to our study of fundamentals of the Christian faith. Today we're thinking about the Bible as a fundamental teaching of God, its existence, its origin, its power, and how it applies to my life and yours as a Christian today. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study together. As always, today's lessons are being brought to you by individual congregations and members of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about God's Word or God's truth or something you've been thinking about that you'd like to sit down and study with somebody about, you'll find people at the Lord's Church who are friendly, who'd be happy to sit down and talk to you, and who love God and love the souls of men. And so visit the Church of Christ in your area if you would. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ. We'd love to help you in your study of the Scripture. Won't you check out our website? thegospelofchrist.com. From our website, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study material. We have books, lessons on every book of the Bible, a wide variety of topics. Uh, you can access those free of charge 24-7. We also have written material and transcripts that are available. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, fill out a media request form. You can do a digital download or we'll even send you a DVD or CD in the mail. Make that available to you free of charge. Just write to us or call us or fill out that form and we'll be glad to make that available to you. And also, in today's world where so many people are using their smartphones, we have an app for both the Android and Apple smartphone available from the Play Stores that you can uh, get those at. And so check out our app as well. Great way to study the Word of God on the go as well. Today we're thinking about the Word of God as a fundamental subject of the Christian faith. And friend, I want to begin by emphasizing throughout the centuries how people have viewed the Word of God, its importance and its value in people's life. For example, Napoleon said, the Bible is no mere book, but a living creature with a power to conquer all that oppose it. And how true that is, it's lasted throughout the centuries. W.H. Seward said this, the whole hope of human progress is suspended on the ever-growing influence of the Bible. The more the Bible is influential in people's life, the more humanity is really going to progress in a good godly way. It was Isaac Newton who said, there are more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history. And we're going to look at some of those today where we can know the Bible is authentic and from God. But he was right. There's a lot of sure marks of authenticity in the Bible. George Washington, American historian, author of the American Revolution, historical error, said, It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. Think about that. Can the world be what God wants it to be without the Bible being used as a guide? In fact, in our nation, we're one nation under God. And if this is God's Word, we need to be one nation under God and His Word. Daniel Webster said it this way, I have read it through many times, and I pity the man who cannot find in it a rich supply of thought and rule of conduct. How good the Bible is for living one's life according to it. And it was Robert E. Lee who said, In all of my perplexities and distresses, the Bible has never failed to give me light 
and to give me strength. And anyone who tries to live according to the Bible knows how uplifting and encouraging the Bible is. But what exactly is this book we call the Bible? What do we know about its origin and where it's from? Friend, I want to ask you to consider with me for just a moment that this book is not just a good book. It's not just a book of wise sayings. This book is from God. We need to realize this book is the word from the mouth of God. It's the inspired will of the God who created us. You see, many people just think of the Bible as a good book of maybe moral uh, suggestions. But that's not how the Bible describes itself. John 6, 68, G Peter said to Jesus, Lord, whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This book is the words of eternal life. John 12, 48 teaches us this book will one day be our judge in everything that we do in life. There's so much humanism, so much postmodernism, evolutionary idea that's taught today in our schools, but friend, we need to realize that's not what the Bible says. Man's not at the center. God is. God made man. Genesis 1 verse 1, the Lord God spoke and man came into being. God created this world by His supernatural power. We are the handiwork of Almighty God and we're here to follow and obey Him, not to make ourselves the center of everything that we do. There's a lot of religious skepticism about the Bible. But friend, when you look to the Bible, you can know what truth is. You can know God's Word. But just as importantly as that, the Christian needs to be convicted that the Bible is from God. Friend, if, I, if I'm not sure, if I can't be convicted the Bible is from God, everything I do is in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 14, Paul would say that about the resurrection, but if I can't have confidence in the Bible as God's Word, how can I know that what I'm doing is right and according to the will of Almighty God? And so let's think for just a moment about some passages that teach us the Bible is inspired. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I want you to see it for yourself. Open your Bible, and I want you to see what the Bible says about it being inspired from God. That's 2 Timothy 3. I want you to look in verses 16 and 17. The Scripture records these words about the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now here the Bible claims, says, all Scripture, not some, not a few, not the ones we like or don't like, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, what does it mean that the Bible is inspired? Are we saying that the Bible is inspired like, Shakespeare was inspired to write a play. No, that, that's not the idea. The word inspiration is a compound Greek word, meaning two words are put together to make a word. It's the word theos, which is the word for God, and it's the word panoustos, which is the word for breathe, literally exhaled. And so when the Bible says it's inspired, what's it saying? God breathed out. God exhaled. And on His breath, were the words we have in the Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13, Paul said, we don't speak as men speak, but we speak as the words of God. We've got to realize these are the words of Almighty God, comparing spiritual things with spiritual words. The Bible was written in words. It's the very, it's not the, God didn't send a movie, God didn't draw a picture. God put it in human language, which throughout the centuries is translatable, and He got us His very word of what He wanted us to know today. Let me give you another illustration of inspiration. Look in your Bible in 2 Peter chapter 1. Here's a beautiful picture of what the Bible means by inspiration. 2 Peter chapter 1, I want you to notice verses 19 through 21. The Bible says this, And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, 
which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing this first, listen to this, no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Some translations will say private origin. Well, where did it originate? For prophecy never came by the will of man, notice this, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This idea of moved here, it's used in other places to describe the wind pushing the sails on a ship and that ship being directed by that wind. What's the idea? Holy men of God were directed by the power of the Holy Spirit what to put in the Bible. And so when we think about inspiration, we're talking about God and His Holy Spirit as the guiding force of inspiration. And so the Bible claims and teaches that it indeed is inspired of God and that God gave us His Word. Now, with the idea of inspiration, let's realize this. By inspiration, we're not just talking about a good book from God. We're talking about a perfect book. It's complete in every way. It is absolute truth. John 17, 17, on all religious matters, the Bible is absolute truth. Jesus prayed this to the Father in John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. What's truth? The word of God is truth. That's the final truth on all matters. James 1, 25, we're told to receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our soul and that we have the perfect law of liberty. Complete is the idea. Contains everything we need. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 God's given to us all things for life and godliness. Uh, I love the language of Psalm 119, 160. The entirety, the sum of your word is truth. You take the Bible and it's its message, the entirety of it, is truth. This is why the psalmist would say in Psalm 19, 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's everything we need, converting the soul and making one wise unto salvation. But as we think about inspiration, we're not just talking about the perfect, complete nature of God's Word. We're talking about it being verbally inspired. Uh, let me give you an example. 2 Samuel 23, 2. David said this, His word was on my tongue. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, David said, and His word was on my tongue. When David's tongue formed the communication that people heard, whose word was that? As an inspired prophet of God. It was God's word. God spoke through these men. God used them to get us the Word. Jeremiah 1 verse 9, God spoke through Jeremiah. Isaiah 51 16, God spoke through Isaiah. Ezekiel 1 verse 3, the Spirit spoke through Ezekiel. And we know that the prophets were prophets of God, telling God's message. And so the Bible is written in words, and we see the essentiality of words. Let me give you an illustration. Galatians 3. I believe about verses 15 through 19. The writer makes an argument about Christ and Him being the Messiah based on one letter in the English alphabet, or one letter in the alphabet. And he does not say, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but to seed. And your seed who is Christ. One letter on one word. That's what we're talking about. The, the, the importance of words and being verbally inspired is definitely emphasized in the Bible. And as we've suggested or as we've seen, the Bible being inspired means that it's complete. John 16 verse 13, Jesus made this promise to His original disciples who would go on to be the penmen God used to write the Bible. God said, Jesus said, and when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. He'll not speak on your own authority. Whatever He'll not speak on His own authority. Whatever He hears, He'll speak, and He'll tell you things to come. These men were guided by the Holy Spirit into all truth. And we have that today. Paul would even say in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write to you. 
These are the commands of God. Friend, with that idea in our mind, how can a person then be sure that the Bible is the Word of God? Let's think about it. And we won't spend the whole of our lesson thinking about this just as a, a point of emphasis. We want people to know that there's evidence to be found in the Bible that it is from God. Let me mention just three of those to you. What evidence is there that the Bible is from God? Friend, I would suggest that the unique nature of the Bible teaches that. Many writers over many centuries, 40 writers over 15 centuries, not knowing each other, many speaking different languages, living in, under different kingdoms, uh, all from different trades, and yet every one of them is in complete harmony on what the Bible says from beginning to end. How could that many men do that over that period of time? H how would they agree on everything said completely in absolute harmony? Well, friend, the unique, uniqueness of the Bible surely gives some credence to its inspiration. But let's mention another one. How else can a person know the Bible's inspired? What about the prophecy? that we find in the Bible. For example, uh, Psalm 22 clearly teaches Jesus would be nailed to a cross. His hands and feet would be nailed to a cross. We read about that happening in John 19, Matthew 27, and the other accounts. It was prophesied a thousand years before it would happen that the Messiah would be nailed, His hands and feet be nailed to a cross. How could you make a prediction like that? Isaiah 7 prophesied that a virgin would bring forth a son. We read in Matthew 1 that that's exactly what happened. Uh, you can read throughout the Bible about the multiple prophecies. You've got prophecies about Israel, how they would go into Babylonian captivity. God told that years before it happened. He told the exact number of years they'd be there, Jeremiah uh, 29, he told when they would be released and who would do it, Isaiah 44 and verse chapter 45, verse 1. And, and it always happened exactly like God. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Bible spanning thousands of years with minute detail. And every one of them fulfilled exactly like God said it would be. What about this as a proof of inspiration? What about the scientific foreknowledge? that we find in the Bible. Go all the way back to the book of Leviticus. God told them then that the eighth day was the best day for circumcision. How did Moses know that then? And even today, we've just now started in the last 100, 200 years to realize that, that on day eight, there is a higher amount of the blood clotting factor than any other day in a newborn's life. How did Moses know that? What about the shape of the earth? We read in Isaiah chapter 30 that God sits above, Job mentions it as well, God sits above the circle of the earth. Well, we now can look at that and see the earth is circular. Planets are circular. But how did they know that then? You've got things mentioned like the hydrological cycle in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea's never filled up. We know that's how it works now. We've got evaporation of all. How did men, uh, Psalm 8, you've got the mentioning of the paths of the sea. Matthew Montaigne, Fontaine Murray actually charted those paths. It's mentioned in Psalm 8, he who passes through the paths of the sea. How did he know that? Before deep sea diving equipment, before sonar, how did he know that in Psalm chapter 8? We're, we're just now figuring out some of this stuff. Recesses in the deep, springs in the deep. There's just a host of information that these people wouldn't have known unless God told them. And friend, you look at archaeological evidence, you look at uh, historical evidence, it all lines up perfectly because the God of the Bible is perfect and He gave us His divine or perfect will. And so we can know from Scripture exactly what it is God wants us to do and how He wants us to live our life. And so let's think about for just a little while this idea of inspiration as it relates to God's authority that's found in the Scripture. Friend, if the Bible is inspired, what does that mean for my life and for yours? Well, friend, it means that we need to do exactly what the Bible says. 
Paul said in Colossians 3.17, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. If we're to do all in the name of, which Acts 4, 7 says is by the authority of Christ, then if the Bible is God's Word, I want to live my life the way Christ wants me to. If these words are inspired by God, here's a natural application to its authority. I shouldn't subtract or add to the Word of God. Revelation 22, 18 and 19, we're not to add to or take away from the things written therein. We're not to go beyond what the Scripture teaches. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 6. You know, another application as it relates to the Bible being inspired of God is we want to do our best every day to, to live according to the Word of God. Are we perfect? No. Do, do we make mistakes? All of us do. We do things we shouldn't. We sin. We get caught up in sometimes the lust of the flesh. But let's realize we want to do our best every day to live by the Bible. Philippians 4 verse 9, Paul said, The things which you learned and heard and received and saw in me, these do. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Imitate me as I also imitate Christ. I want to try to walk in the footsteps of Jesus each and every day. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number 21. And then I want to love the Word of God. Oh, how I love your law, the psalmist would say. It is a meditate, my meditation all the day. I want to have a deep abiding love for God and for His Word. The, if these are the words of eternal life, and friend, I want to love that. I, I want to share, I want to let others know about God's Word and its saving power. I want to share that message with other people as well. And so when we think about the Bible as God's Word, let's live it, let's love it, let's let others know about its power and how important that is in each and every person's life. But friend, as it relates to God's Word, a, a lesson that we surely want to emphasize is we don't want to turn to the right hand or to the left. We simply want to stay with it, stay true to it. Joshua 1 verse 7, God said to Joshua, who is about to take up the mantle of leadership from Moses, helping him to be courageous, don't turn from the right hand or the left, just do what God says. And Joshua does that. He follows God's word as God would have him to do. And he's blessed and the people are blessed as long as they continue to do that. And friend, that's what we want to do with the Bible today. You know, a sad example we see is in the New Testament. When people stop doing that, the Bible says that they transgress God's will when they stopped following God and started putting the commandments of men in its place. Jesus said of the people in His day, hypocrites, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, These people draw near to me, honors me with their lips, draw near to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. When people stop following the Bible, friend, in religion and society, it's always going to go downhill. In fact, in Galatians 1, Paul said that people were accursed who did not follow the teaching of God as he wanted them to in the Bible. And so let's do what the Bible says. We're instructed. God's people are told to speak only as God speaks. 1 Peter 4, 11, If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. On matters that face our society today, on matters that relate to salvation, on matters that relate to the church or our country, where do we turn for guidance? If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If our country and our nation is going to be what God wants it to be, friend, we've got to let the Bible have the premier place it needs today. And to do other than that, to go beyond the teaching of Christ, friend, that's contrary to God's will. That's sinful. If anyone transgresses and goes beyond the doctrine of Christ, he doesn't have God as his Father. We can't just make it up as we go. We can't do whatever we like or what do we feel like or whatever society thinks is popular. We've got to do what the Bible says. And so God's people are always taught to do exactly what He says and to follow His teaching in every way. I think of the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus said, It's not everybody 
that, that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. Well, who is going there? He who does the will of the Father. Friend, our encouragement today as we think about the Bible is, let's realize how important this book is. Let's realize it's from God. This is God communicating with us today. This is how He wants me to live my life and what He wants me to do. Friend, I can't go from the right or the left. I, I can't change that. But if I'll do what the Bible says, my life and yours will be richly blessed. Have you obeyed God's will? Friend, are you a member of the Lord's church? Have you obeyed the gospel plan of salvation as taught in this book? You may be thinking to yourself, what does God teach? A friend, the Bible teaches you've got to hear the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Once I've studied and read and heard this book, am I willing to believe Jesus is the Son of God to be saved? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Believing in Christ, would you be willing to repent of sin? Luke 13, verse 3, Jesus said, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Peter preached, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 3, verse 19, having repented, are you willing to make the good confession that you already believe? The Ethiopian eunuch said it, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And our Lord said, if you won't confess me before men, Neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And having done those things, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? When the first gospel sermon is preached in Acts chapter 2, and they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter preached, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Jesus Himself said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. And rising up out of that water of baptism, would you walk in newness of life every day, striving to please the Lord, walking in the light, 1 John 1, 7, Romans 6, verse 4. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study today about the Bible. We hope that you'll join us next time as we're going to study more about fundamentals of the Christian faith. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the